Hey, Shalom, Akiyam, Shalom, Kahlo, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shah, Bashem, Kakadash. And send double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to Yahweh out there pushing away from the city and truth. I'm your brother Ariala. Um, today, I want to go into a little bit of history. I want to go into a little bit of um, just kind of a background knowledge of uh, Japheth and a lot of time and the Greeks. A lot of people out there to say that the so called white man comes from the family of Japhet. I want to touch in on that. That is not true. Uh, we tell you, brothers and sisters, that the Greeks that we know that you read about are the Edomites and have led the, led into the Greco Roman Empire and into the uh, empires that are ruling today and, and basically rule this beast system. And so I want to touch in on a, a little bit of this history. Lord willing, it's edifying. As you see here on this map, Japhet, after the flood, went and lived in the areas of Western Asia, all up in Europe, in those, re in, in those regions. And we tell you guys that after a process of time, they actually were displaced. They, they were displaced further out, you know, into uh, uh, Russia and down even into uh, the, the islands today that, you know, that we are going in on. Well, I want to talk about a little bit of that history and kind of touch in on that. And we There's an article here on early worldhistory.blogspot.com that goes in on Hellenization. We did a series on uh, the Gentiles. Uh, I highly suggest those of you who have not really studied those uh, these things to, and want to get a, a full understanding of how we break down the New Testament. And we show you there's pieces of history that you have to understand to understand what the Gentiles is talking about in the New Testament and what the Most High is dealing with. But in this article, it touches on down in it, uh, the Hellens and, 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 and who they were. And I want to read that, go into a little bit of their history, go into the scriptures and see the history that we have there. And Lord willing, this can kind of bring things together. Now, when you skip down, it says here, the Hellens or Greeks were so called by classical writers because they were the descendants of Helen, the son of Delusian, and Pyra, and Pyrrha. They were assimilators from the start. Meaning they, 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 they took over people and made them follow their culture, right? When they came to inhabit the isles and mainland of what is now Greece, they displaced the indigenous Pelasgians, bringing with them some form of their writing, language, religion, and art. The Pelasgians were unrelated to the Hellens in any significant sense. Some modern scholars even believe their language was pre-Indo-European, unintelligible to the Greeks on first contact. All right? So, you know what, let's read the next, the, the next paragraph. It says, the native culture was soon absorbed into that of the new arrival. Though Herodotus attests that to some Pelasgian groups surviving with mutually intelligible language, most intermarried and became fully Greek, invisible, and largely forgotten. Okay? The most important period of Hellenization by far was that which transpired under the reign of Alexander the Great. Okay, so I want to lean in on this whole word Pelasgians. P -p -p uh, 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 Pelasgians. When you go to simple Wikipedia search real quick, it says the name Pelasgians was used by classical Greek writers to refer either to the ancestors or forerunners of the Greeks or to all inhabitants of Greece before the emergence or arrival of Greeks aware of their Greekness, right? In general, Pelasgian has, become to, has come to mean more broadly all the indigenous inhabitants of the Aegean Sea, sea region and their cultures, a hold-all term for any ancient, primitive, and presumably indigenous people in the Greek world. You see that? So these people were displaced and removed out of there, okay? During the classical period, 
enclaves under that name survived in general locations of mainland Greece, Crete, and other regions of the Aegean. Populations identified as Pelasgians spoke a language or languages that at the time Greeks identified as barbaric, though some ancient writers nonetheless described the Pelasgians as Greeks. So we know the Tower of Babel. We know how the nations were split. We know how the languages were confounded. So when these two people met, you had a clash of language and culture. Leading the Edomites, and that's what we're going to get to, showing you how the Greeks of the Alexander the Great, his forefather, how, and all those new inhabitants of the Macedonian region, or Greece region, they go back to the Edomites. They displaced those Japhetic people. Now, what I want to do real quick is show you how ancient scholars link these Pelasgians, because we tell you, we talk about the ancient Etruscan Empire that ruled in all throughout Italy, and how they were dark-skinned, and how they go back to Japheth, and, and how they were removed. We're reading little pieces of that right now, okay? Now, when you go here, and you type in, I'll do, I'll do this in a second. This is, uh, uh, I think it was, uh, uh, I, I want to say it was an uh, Egyptian article, but I translated it over to um, English on Etruscan culture. And what it said was, it says, the Etruscans and their civilization has long disappeared from Europe, but their legacy lives on in many ways, even though their, even though their many contributions are often unrecognized uh, for their proper origin. Why were they important when we hear so little about them in history books? Long before the Rome was founded and grew into a, a major power, you have to understand that this has been translated to English. The Etruscans ruled a large portion of Italy and surrounding air and seas and were one of three major naval powers of the Mediterranean Sea. You can go and read that yourself if, if you want to. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is type in. When you skip down, it says the Bible is fairly accurate when the Etruscans are listed as one of seven of the seven sons of Japheth in the company of Gomer, uh, uh, Mida, uh, Javan, the Ionians, Tubal, uh, 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 Meshach, Tirash, and Magog. Okay, you see that? According to Herodotus, the Ionians of Greece were also the, what? Pelasgians. Europeans recently have claimed that these were ancestors of the Indo-Europeans from a time before, all right, the Indo-European was a widespread uh, language family. But there is no credible proof of that, right? So we do, we understand that these ancient people, these Japhetic people, the Etruscans and everybody else, you see, were displaced by the Hellens, by the Edomites, by the Greeks. And there was a process, and, this, and, and that was going down uh, uh, years before. You see the rise of what we understand as the modern Greeks, okay? This is, the, this is what we uh, tell uh, people, right? This is what we tell you, brothers and sisters, that you have to understand that there was a lot of migrating movement, wars that caused the Edomites to be in those lands and regions. Okay. Now this is real quick. It was just another article I pulled up of somebody, you know, who had did some uh, studies. It says the Etruscans occupied the region uh, to the north of Rome between the uh, Arno and Tiber rivers in the west of the Appian mountains. The Romans were first a subject people of the Etruscans and later their conquerors. See, the Etruscan culture was well developed and advanced, but distinctively different from the cultures of the other peoples in the region. This distinctive difference immediately led to, to the question of where did the Etruscans originate? This question was subject to active speculation among the Greeks. Some Greeks held that the Etruscans were a branch of the Pelasgians, aboriginal inhabitants of the Aegean region. Others, such as Virgil, uh, uh, thought that they came from Lydia, a kingdom of western Anatolia. The Greek uh, master historian Herodotus also ascribes the origin of the Etruscans to uh, Lydia. Uh, Herodotus says the ancestors of the Etruscans were forced to migrate from Lydia 
uh, uh, because of 18 years of hard times. The Lydians built ships, and half of the population left under the leadership of uh, Tahir, Tahir Renus, the son king of, of Lydia. All right? And so we understand that a whole bunch of things uh, went down after the flood that led the, uh, uh, the nations to get to where they were. Okay? So what I want to touch on now is I want to go in on... Um, a bit on Alexander the Great. We always read these scriptures. You have to put these pieces together to really understand what's going on, okay? So, when you read this in 1 Maccabees, the first chapter, and you go to the first verse, it says, and it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians, and Medes, that he reigned in his stead the first over Greece and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth. Now, so what is this talking about? This is talking about the Greco-Persian wars. I'm not going to read all this. You brothers and sisters can type it in. Go look it up. Read your history. The Greco-Persian wars, just real quick, on Wikipedia were a series of conflicts between the uh, Archimedes Archimedes Empire and the Greek city-states that started in 499 BC and lasted until 449 BC. The, the collision between these fictitious, uh, fractitious political world with, uh, of the Greeks and the enormous empire of the Persians began with Cyrus the Great. Uh, began when Cyrus the Great conquered the Greek inhabited region of Ionia in uh, 547 BC. Struggling to control the independent-minded uh, cities of Ionia, the Persians appointed tyrants to rule each of them. This would prove to be the source of much trouble for the Greeks and Persians alike. All right, so when you look up tyrants, basically they would place many kings in different places, all right, to rule in different lands. Now, when you go to, when you go to uh, Esther, when you read in Esther, um, and you read in the uh, Apocrypha, you see that Haman the Agagite, all right, Haman the Agagite, and we, we make that point that he was a, a Macedonian as well. When you, <clears throat> when you go here, excuse me, it says, hold on just one second. It's like you had to get a, a drink of water. In the editions of Esther, the 16th chapter, I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to read quickly. It says, the great king Artaxerxes, uh, uh, until the princes and governors of 170, uh, 107 and 20 provinces from India unto Ethiopia, unto all our faithful subjects, greeting. So he had a vast empire. And within that vast empire, he, there was tyrants set up or kind of like you would take the uh, a person from that region and let them lead and just control them from afar. Right. Many. Uh, the more often they are honored with the great bounty of the gracious princes and more proud, the more proud they are waxing and endeavor to hurt not our subjects only, but not being able to bear uh, abundance to take in hand and to practice also against those that do them good. And take not only thankfulness away from among men, but also lift, lift it up with the glorious words of lewd persons who were never good. They... Think to escape the justice of the Most High that seeth all things and hateth evil. Oftentimes, also fair speeches of those that are put in trust to manage their friends' affairs have caused many that are in authority to be partakers of innocent blood and have enwrapped them in uh, remediless calamities. Beguiling with falsehood and deceit of their lewd disposition, the innocency, innocency and goodness of princes. Now ye may see this. As we have declared, not so much by ancient histories as ye may, if ye search what have been wickedly done of the late through the pestilent behavior of them that are unworthily, unworthily placed in authority. You see, what we was reading about during the times of the Greco-Persian Wars, because the empire was so vast, the Persian Empire was so vast, different tyrant leaders, puppet leaders were placed. Now, it's, they did all of that just to lead you up into who they're talking about. It says, and we must take care for the time to come that our kingdom may be quiet and peaceable.
for all men, both by changing our purposes and always judging things that are evident with more equal proceeding. For Amon, this is talking about Haman in the Bible, Haman, a Macedonian, all right, the son of uh, uh, Ad, uh, Admatha, being indeed a stranger from the Persian blood and far distant from our goodness and as a stranger received of us, had so far had so far forth obtained the favor that we should that we show toward every nation. You see, we show favor toward every nation. We give these nations, we come conquer these nations, and then we allow people from that region to rule. Right? It says, as as that he was called our father and was continually honored of all the next person unto the king, but he, not bearing his great dignity went about to deprive us of our kingdom and life, having by manifold and cunning deceits sought of us the destruction, as well as, this is talking about Mordecai, uh, Mardo, uh, Mardochius, who saved our life and continually procured our good, as also the blameless Esther, partaker of our kingdom uh, with our whole nation, right? For by these means, he thought, finding us destitute of friends, to have translated the kingdom of the Persians to the Macedonians. But we find that the Jews, who this wicked wretch have delivered to utter destruction, are no evildoers, but live by just laws. So, now, because of the, the time of, in the seasons, the Greco-Persian Wars, Haman, the Agagite, which is what he's called when you go to the book of Esther, when you go to the book of Esther, Esther chapter 3, verse 1, it says, After these things did King Artaxerxes, uh, Artaxerxes, when you look him up, they say that this is Xerxes the first, or maybe the second, Xerxes the first, right? It says, After these things did King uh, uh, Xerxes promote Haman, the son of Hamatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him, right? Now, when we look up Haman, see that? Look up Haman. It says the, the main antagonist in the book of Esther, who according to the Hebrew Bible was the vice uh, the visor of the Persian Empire under King Xerxes, commonly identified as Xerxes, but traditionally equated uh, with uh, Artaxerxes I or, or the second, as his Epitaph Agagite indicates Haman was a descendant of Agag, the king of the Amalekites, right? Amalek is a nation described in the Hebrew Bible as the enemy of the Israelites. The name Amalek can refer to the nation's founder, a grandson of Esau. His descendants, the Amalekites, are the territory of Amalek, which they inhabited, right? So Haman, the Agagite, dwelling in the land of Macedonia, showing you how the Edomites got into Macedonia and displaced the Japhetic people. The Etruscan being one form of these ancient people that was called the Pelasgians. They were all displaced and removed. And that family of the Edomites came to reach basically the premier power leading all the way up into what we understand as Philip the Macedonian and Alexander the Great, all right? And so we, we trying to tell you to put these pieces together because this is why there was so much, you know, fire that came against, so much fire that had came against, you know, Haman and all these people. Because when you go back and read the story, they didn't just kill Haman. They went to, and was, like, we tried to allow you Edomites to make it, Nah, we get rid of you, okay? And that's the whole story of Purim. But you have to know the backdrop and the history of the Greco-Persian Wars to understand the sentiment that Xerxes had, okay? And what had happened, because they were like, oh man, they're trying, to set, they're trying to set us up. So all these things was going down at that same time, okay? At that same time, you had all of these wars going down, okay? And that's what led up into what Alexander the Greek, who was the same Macedonian, who goes back to the uh, to the to, to those descendants of Haman, all them, bro, all them. 
because that's what Edomites would do. They would work their way up in there, get marriages, get pieces of land here. That's how the Etruscans got take, taken down. All right, and then they made a whole myth of the story of Rome and Romulus and Remus, when it was just a, it was just systematically them getting this, getting that, marrying into this family. That's why after the Dark Ages, that's how the Edomites came back up. Go go back and read the Dark Ages history and the systematic breakdown of the Byzantine Empire. It was piece by piece by piece, man. All right, that's how the Edomites got up in there. Esau is the modern day Greeks that you read about. The, the, the so called white people, they are not Japheth. The original Japhetic people were removed. That's in history. We read, we're reading about it. They were displaced. <laughs> the Japhetic people in Greece and all the whole area and region were removed. Okay? So, you know, I pulled up these articles and I'm pulling up this information for you, brothers and sisters, to kind of go back through. So you can go back and read these scriptures and put the pieces together, you know. And so one of the things that uh, I did, you just type in Macedonians and you see how it always linking with uh, the Edomites pretty much. Okay. And go and read their history on the uh, Greco-Persian uh, wars. All right. And so all of these things were going down around the same time. Okay. Around the same time, we're reading all of these things. So, Lord willing, that was edifying, and that kind of brings a little bit more information uh, for you all. And uh, you can take this and, and go ahead and do more intensive studies for yourself. Call Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you. I can't let that push me worse and see you in truth. Shalom.